So, do you really think you can challenge me? Let me tell you, the game's afoot. I'll turn this printer upside down and inside out if I have to, until it works the way I wanted it to work. And you, the viewer, can judge by the end if I was successful or if it's just another part in everyone's favorite series, ambitious but rubbish. But let me tell you what the fuss is all about. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm currently trying to build this modular enclosure for 3D printers. And I ran into several issues from, well, excessive delamination to clogged up nozzles. This here is probably caused by that drafty window behind this curtain and our current cold snap when at night the heating system turns down in the house and cold air gushes in from that basement window. I think PETG really doesn't like that. That's not Sowell's fault. But that's also not that big a deal. On the other hand though, I can report that my door design with the 3D printed hinges, even though squeaky, would actually work. The print would have finished. And that's where the issue started. I said last time that the PETG filament tries to stay in the shape it was in for a long time and can get caught on the filament runout sensor. So this time I was smart. I took the side cutters, went inside the spool and snipped the end off in the hope it would uh, come off the spool nice and clean. This tiny little hook about the thickness of the spool material got once again caught in the filament runout sensor. And my printer thought filament is still flowing through the extruder and it kept on printing. I really think a printer of that size should have a filament motion detector. I know there are solutions out there and I will look into that if I retrofit my SVO8 with such a device. A interrupted print or a non-finished print wouldn't be the end of the world. If this particular material, PETG, would not mess up all my nozzles when the filament gets stuck. This was the original hardened steel nozzle from Sovo. And when the filament got stuck, the extruder tried to extrude and the teeth were chewing on the filament and it shoved that stuff into the hot end here. In this case, I can take the nozzle off and then clean it or exchange the nozzle, no problem. However, PETG is so sticky that up here in the heat break, there's still material in there and you can't clean it out. I even used a drill to get through it. I can see it, but there's a very thin layer on the inside of this little tube. I can't get it in from any side. No chance in hell. It's not working. So I can't use this anymore. Exchangeable nozzles don't help. So I switched back to the coded nozzle, original one from Sovo. And then this door panel didn't finish because once again the filament got stuck in the filament runout sensor. And the same deal. Hot end itself, still obstructed. I can see that little, that, that thin layer of PETG in there. And I went through with a drill bit as well. I mean, somehow maybe I could put it on a, in the oven and warm it up and then like scrape it out or something. It was in printing mode without flow through the nozzle and the entire PETG got overheated, stuck to the inside of the nozzle. This thing is so clogged up. I tried to go with the poker and whatever I could find. Didn't work. It's so caked on in there, it's unbelievable. So I took that little set screw out, removed the press in nozzle, and I hope that I can modify this hot end to take the hardened steel nozzles by threading it like I did in the other video, but this time with the right tools. Oh. Almost forgot, this is how stuck filament gets in the extruder after being chewed on all night. And then there's another issue. In order to avoid 
the filament delamination, I enclosed my printer with my makeshift styrofoam caboose. Even though my little makeshift enclosure has more headroom than the original Sovol enclosure that would come with the printer or that you can order separately, the wire hit the top and then folded in. And then it got stuck in between the uh, gantry. So what's the point of a printer with that much build volume when something like that can happen? I thought, ah, whatever, the print didn't finish anyways. Let's hit auto home and start over again. And what then happened is that the Bowden tube, which got dragged down by the wire, got stuck in between the print head and the rear right corner and got pinched. Not cool, not the end of the world, but also not cool. What are we gonna do about this? I have a few quite radical ideas and by the time you see the end product, you will also know why my printer is currently wearing a silly hat. But I'm not certain that I can push out that video next week. There's a lot of modeling that needs to be done. I have to print several parts and I have a cold coming. Apparently my kid's last playdate came with a side order of illness. So I'm gonna focus on fixing my printer, modifying it in a me kind of fashion. And when that is done, I will show you how that turned out. So I'm pretty sure you guys don't wanna hear me sneeze or cough into the camera for 10 minutes. That will also give those 300 some returning but unsubscribed viewers the chance to subscribe to the channel. Just push the little thing down there. It's not that hard. Thanks. See you guys next time.